What's happened is, is that the American people have kind of been cut out of this. I mean, most Americans really do not know that, uh, that most of the deterioration in their quality of life is related to immigration policies that the government controls. In other words, all of the population pressures that deteriorate people's quality of life are related to immigration. That is, you know, about 85% of population growth currently is immigration related. And in terms of long term, it's all because the, the American fertility is, is just below replacement level, which means American fertility has no long term consequences for population growth. So if somebody is sick of the traffic, or sick of the fact that the traffic just gets worse every year, or sick of the fact that the infrastructure seems to be deteriorating. You know, you look at the interstate highway system, it's nothing like it was in the 60s uh, in terms of your ability to get around, in terms of the quality, the bridges, the, the, the streets, the, all kinds of infrastructures throughout the country are deteriorating in most communities. And they're deteriorating because the communities are having to expend so much effort to handle new population growth. What do Americans want out of life? And every poll that I've seen that going back to the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and now just as recently as a couple of years ago, show Americans, most Americans would prefer to live in a smaller city than they currently live in. And only 6% of Americans think their quality of life would be improved if we increase the population size. Why would a democratically elected federal government constantly force massive population growth on a people who don't want it. Well, because their special interests and because the American people are not fully aware of how the dots are connected. And in the end, you have to blame the American people. The American people have not paid attention. They have not used the power they have as voters uh, to, to stop uh, this, this federally coerced population growth. That we had to find a way <coughs> to amass people who are interested in this so they could work together at the same time. And, and you know, I think that the key things are, even though people, it sounds trite, you contact your members of Congress. And you don't expect that because you contact them they'll change, but you expect that because you and your neighbors and your relatives and together hundreds of thousands of people contact your members of Congress, that they will start to bend to the will of the people. And we saw that in the amnesty fights. Two straight years, about five different amnesty votes, and the people beat the entire establishment each time. Now, so you gotta attend town hall meetings. You gotta be writing letters to the editor. Uh, you've got to be <clears throat> part of groups that visit the congressional offices back home. And occasionally, maybe you'll be able to come to Washington and do it here. The fact is, citizens have to actually go back to what the original idea of democracy was in this country, which is you don't just sit back and think somebody else is going to take care of this. The fact is, Congress for 30 or 40 years has been massively changing everything about the quality of life in America. And they're going to keep doing it. There's nothing, no reason they'll ever, they'll, they'll ever stop, at least not in this century. I mean, they will, they will drive this country to a billion people. We're at 300 million now. They'll drive it to a billion people because the establishment have ways to create their gated communities, their, their special flyaway spots in Wyoming where their, their fishing and hunting spots are protected. You know, the, the, the rich can always protect themselves from the effects of their greed. And the only way that we stop this greedy ruination of America is to is have the massive grassroots movement.